There's a new way to build tables in Tableau. It's a Viz extension that has Excel-like capabilities in Tableau natively, and it works much, much better than some of the hacks we've been building for the last decade in Tableau. To show you how it works, as ever, let's get stuck in. Okay, so we're here inside of Tableau Desktop, but one thing to note is I'm not in the newest version. I'm actually in 24.2 because this feature is backwards compatible with all capabilities that support Viz extension. So you can go back to 24.2 and still use this even if you have that already today. So that's actually quite a nice touch. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and show you how to add this Viz extension to your chart. It's simply here uh, under Viz extensions. If you don't see it here, just go to add extension. You can go to the extension gallery that launches in product, select built by Tableau, and you'll see a shortened list. And there you can see Tableau table. It gives you some information about this. This is a network enabled extension, which means it does send data back and forth on the internet. It's hosted over here. And for that reason, a few companies will obviously have concerns about security. Um, I believe sandbox extensions have been something that have worked in the past, but I do not know when they'll come back, if that makes sense. So that's gonna be an interesting uh, point of detail. But nevertheless, hit open. And when you hit open, it opens up the extension. It asks you if you want to allow the extensions, gives you some detail about who it is, who's developed it. You can obviously click through to any of this information, hit okay. And then once you do that, the extension loads up in this little box. So this box here, essentially loading a web window that actually renders the visualization. That's how most of these work. So. The way these work is actually quite simple. This ta Tableau table is probably the simplest um, you know, chart type I've ever seen in Tableau. You just go ahead and drag anything you want onto region and actually have that sort of descriptor at the very beginning. So we can go ahead, maybe drag cities, we'll drag manufacturer on there just to give us a little bit more variety. And I think that is good. We've got uh, manufacturer, city, state, province, and so on and so forth. Now, to change the order of these, you can just do what you're used to in Tableau. You can just uh, move these around so that it works however, however you really you want. Um, I don't think we have the category. We'll put the region at the front so we can kind of get a bit of a hierarchy going here. Let's put all the numerical values at the end because I think that makes the most sense. So there we have it. We've set up our table. This is all it is now. The next thing to think about is what can you do with each of these columns? Because this is quite a bland table and I'm sure you've seen the examples of what this feature can do. So how do you get there? Well, there's a couple of things to note. At the top here, you have what's called the toolbar. This toolbar has a couple of things, it has some formatting and a search bar. The formatting becomes active when you click a column. So that means that each column has its own formatting control. So yes, you can make one column specifically stand out by changing the font, maybe underlining it and then have another column behave in a completely different way, maybe smaller text in bold uh, in a completely different font. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but that's something that's possible in terms of formatting, real fine grain control. But it means you can kind of have visual hierarchies in the table, which is kind of nice. The other thing is you'll see some sorting capability natively inside of the table. So you can just click on these and it's actually sorting all the rows on that table using this sort. And it does a standard Tableau thing of three clicks, and it will cycle through all the options, descending, ascending, and obviously no sorting. No sorting is technically data source order, but in this particular case, because we've got a hierarchy, it's kind of alphabetical order because we've got region on the left. So anyway, that's that's um, that's sort of a, a quirk of Tableau. We'll go into some other time. So those are the two functions you get with this particular table. So you click on the column, you've got the toolbar at the top, you've got the sorting on the left, and then on the right of each one, you've got some additional capabilities. So you can clear the filters if you set any up, um, sort ascending, sort descending, reset sorting, format, clear formatting and rename. You're probably thinking, well, what filters have I set? Like I've got, I see nothing in the filters pane. Well, in this particular case, the formatting actually comes from a slightly different place. So let me show you how to enable those options. Let's just uh, clear the filters. So you can see that I've clicked that and nothing's happened. And what we can do is if we click on this uh, toolbar, okay, and we open up this option, table settings, it loads up this um, this uh, window. This takes a little bit of a sec, a bit, a bit of time to load up. And um, you can see there's some additional options. So the toolbar we're seeing is what we actually clicked to enable and show this. Um, if you select show column filters, this is where you can start to do filtering. And this is the Excel-like filtering that we've seen before. You've got some other options, the search bars on the top right over here. You've got the ability to do the Excel download, that's over here on the top right. And so these are all the options for the entire table that are available. So we'll open all, all of them up so we can go through it. 
And now in here, I can just start typing. And as I type, it dynamically searches. So I don't need to type all of it. It just does it in real time. And you can see it's super sharp. It's really, really quite fast. Let's say I wanted to find all the cells in Boston. You can see that it's it's got sort of um, uh, capitalization sensitivity there. So it just searches the text string regardless of whether there's any capitals or not. And you can find everything there. Um, you can then additionally pair up these filters with each other. So let's say I want Boston. Yeah, there and then I want France as well in this column and then I want to do it in um, uh, let's let's see something I can type I can't type any of these Normandy let's go Normandy I can type that there we go so there you go I found that sort of three item combination and then additionally you do have sliders for numerical fields essentially uh, continuous fields so let's go ahead and clear Normandy we can do that by clicking that X and that will clear that up and then now you can see that I can actually filter now. The interesting thing here is as I'm filtering, you're not you're not really seeing anything because it's actually filtering kind of from the bottom up. It's kind of like a weird one. But if I just bring this in, you'll see that there, you can see that as I filter this, it's really quite fast. It's so zippy. It's not like, you know, a native chart where everything stays, um, you know, selected and then it does the spinner and then you see what you're seeing. You actually get real fast interactivity here, which is, which is kind of really good. So... This is a nice touch. Now, you'll have also seen uh, this feature show that you can actually visualize each of these columns as well. And the way to do that is back in that formatting capability. So when you click on this drop down, you'll see some filters. We've talked about the sorting already. These are just the same options. But then if we select formatting, it opens up a specific formatting pane for this specific column you selected. And that in itself has a couple of options. So the first one is formatting type. So you can choose the default, which is just the numerical values and text. Data bars, which starts to do some visual analysis in here. And color scale, which kind of puts a color to the uh, number. So you can kind of get a context of the intensity of that number in the context of the entire table. And so um, in most things, you maybe have seen something like this. Now, additionally to that, you can change the formatting, the bar color, all of the things you'd expect to change. But for this, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. I'm going to keep it black to match the rest of my items. I'm going to keep it with no shading in the back of the table. We're just going to keep it completely vanilla. You can show mark text as well. That kind of, I think, breaks things a little bit. I've seen a few people talk about bugs in this specific setup. So we'll just keep this simple for now. And then additionally, you can do conditional formatting. And the nice thing about this is you add rules to the conditional formatting. So it's not just one rule. You can add many. So you can say, hey, um, show me all the values. Let me just actually show a mark text so I can see some sort of values and get an idea of how big the numbers are. So we can say here, show me items, uh, any item greater than, let's say, 500. We'd like to mark it red. OK, that's rule number one. Let's add in rule number two. We'll say is less than and we'll talk, uh, let's see, anything less than 10 pounds. 10 pounds is my data. Yep. Yeah. And actually, yeah, for those ones, we'll do um, yellow. Nice, nice, bold yellow. OK, so that those are my rules. Rule one, rule two. And of course, you can, you know, move the rule up, move the rule down. There's a little bit of a hierarchy to that as well. The first rule will take precedence over the next rule. And so if I close that and now I start filtering. As we start to come down, you'll see that that filtering is still working on the low end, which is what we'd expect. I can actually sort this in descending order. So you can see this kind of play out a little bit more. And if I uh, just, let's just see if we can go up here. What is this value? It's 168. So I set the value too high. Oh, that's, that's annoying. So let's go back into the formatting and let's say that it should be 90. There you go. Now that's a little bit better of a number. Let's do 70 because it will just select a few more. So there we go. You've got the top um, items there, and you can see this sort of filtering down. It really is quite fast, it's almost so too fast for people's good. And then here, if I filter the top, it's just gone the full range of the entire, um, what's the word, the entire table. Don't forget, I'm still filtered on Boston, which is why that filter takes quite some time to engage, because I'm actually filtering out stuff that's outside of the, the context. But if I if I clear that Boston filter, you can actually see this updating in real time as I as I move the slider. So there's, there's so many moving parts here to kind of understand. I think it will take a bit of time to kind of use this feature correctly because there'll be this like instant urge to like super format everything and play with all these settings. Um, but what I would always say is less is more. And so you might actually have to do a lot of formatting to pair it back down to something that works really, really nicely. Okay. 
Now, the last thing I want to show you is the search capability, because the search capability allows you to search anything on the entire setup. So if I just search HP, you see that it actually does the highlighting capability. So whereas before the search was doing it in each column and filtering down, this search fe feature highlights options. So this is actually quite a nice touch. And it just allows you to see something. Maybe you've narrowed it down to maybe a handful of items that can fit on screen. You can then use that search function to really get that even further down and a little bit more um, capable. So there you go. That's sort of how it works. Now, the thing about this is we're not done yet. There's just so much to talk about. So in the tooltip options, you've got your standard tooltip. This is nothing new. I kind of find this interesting because the, the tooltip option sort of renders the old Tableau in the background and then the, the detail and the formatting is all the new Tableau. So obviously there is some interesting interplay between traditional Tableau and new Tableau in here. I don't quite get that sort of full context, but that's something to bear in mind. Obviously we've talked about the formatting of the extension. This allows you to bring this up. So if you were to hide the toolbar like that and wonder how do I get that back while well, you click on the format extension here and then you can show the toolbar and in the toolbar, you've got the same options that you've had before. So that's pretty much how the canvas works. Now, now the very final thing we want to do is talk about this Excel export option just up here on the top right hand side. We get an option to export the Excel. We're going to save it into this test folder on my desktop. You'll see that it downloads it very quickly and it's done. And now I'm going to go ahead and open that. Um, in Excel, just bear with me one second. And here it is in Excel. Now the formatting is kind of followed through. Um, the, the red background has come from uh, the formatting we're doing. We don't have the bars in here. We do have the formatting. Actually, it's come through exactly as it was formatted. So one thing you can sort of take from this is you can actually build the tables you need directly out of this capability and have it export with exactly the same formatting. So all of that time and attention you put in can come out now. The problem is, is if you have this report come through in an email subscription, I believe this extensions render is blank. So this is great if you're going to export the Excel, but not great if you're going to you know, do anything else with it. So um, this is a really, really nice touch. I think I think it's really useful. I have seen some discussions saying, hey, look, you know, this isn't what Tableau is for. We're not supposed to export the, the, the data. And I, I just do think, look, people are asking for this. Like, why are we here to tell people how to use the product? Yes, I know all the side effects that come from it. I know all the bad practice. But the problem is, is if we don't offer people these tools, they just go and do it anyway. They'll find any possible way to get onto another product that lets them do exactly what they want. So I think it's 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 a balance between offering people um, you know, what they want and also doing it well. And I think this is a good balance. This really does alleviate what I would have called the pressure and asking developers to build things that look like Excel that aren't Excel. I think Tableau have nailed the balance of what people want with doing it in a Tableau specific way that actually supports some of the many things you'd want to do. And of course, because it's a Viz extension, it's still affected by other charts. So if I was to uh, very quickly, I don't know, build another table with just region and sales, let's just make this super simple, then put them onto a dashboard and do this. <clears throat> and then I'm going to select this as my filter. <coughs> and now when I select central, it filters all of central. When I select north, it filters all of north. And I select south, it filters all of south. So it's still a dashboard element. That's an easy thing to forget. But this actually feels a lot nicer. It feels like a capability you really want to use. And I think, hey, this is going to change a lot of people's workflow it's going to make it a ton easier the difference is you've just got to start using viz extensions so let's talk a bit about some of the not so ideal things so subscriptions are definitely one thing i believe viz extensions still render blank when they come through in a subscription that is not ideal the other thing is viz extensions have this sort of infamous context um, around security and i think this actually just comes from a lack of understanding of web developer technology and um, the way I think cloud technology works generally. Um, the first thing I'll say is that a lot of customers use Tableau Cloud. So if those customers are already on Tableau Cloud, on Tableau infrastructure, running Tableau applications with all of their data inside of the Tableau platform on that infrastructure, I, I struggle to see why it's a difficult leap to then use something like a Viz extension that's built by Tableau as well, 
inside of the product with other extensions like um, third party extensions or extensions built by other developers. I can see the where the question comes from. What if those developers start doing something with my data? I, I'll come to that in a second. But for these ones built by Tableau, they should be a lower barrier of trust because the, you're using the platform already. So if you don't trust Tableau, the vendor, why would you trust them with your platform and all your data and extracts and connections and all of that? Okay, that's sort of like a, a pretty straightforward thing. Now, the next thing is the developers. The developers that are currently on the exchange, they are doing it with their reputation on the line. These aren't people who've just come out of nowhere, at least not yet, to build extensions. <clears throat> and so the real question here is, Tableau need to keep doing the work to verify these developers and make sure they clear a high bar so we keep the quality of extensions really high. That is a completely fair question. And the problem is, is once you sign up to visit extensions, you don't know the journey. So I can see organizations wanting to see that history develop a bit more, wanting not to be the first to beta test visit extensions, as it were. Or maybe wanting to wait a year or two before they adopt it to see what the best practice is, some of the security questions get answered. And also Tableau will obviously enhance the capability. Sandboxed extensions will definitely be something that I think will come back and we'll be able to use that. <clears throat> so, you know, yes, I see the, the, the issue, but the reality is a lot of companies are already using the cloud. For those companies, this should be an easier jump. For everyone else, if you're on Tableau server and all of that stuff, that is a different discussion. And I think the thing with the extensions is a lot of the extensions can be run natively on your own infrastructure. You just need to talk to the developer if it's a third party one. And I think with the Tableau ones, you can actually download the extensions and put them as a specific um, sort of thing. You can put the T-Rex files in a specific places and then they're able to run as well. So I think there's a lot of support for this. <coughs> and Yes, it won't be for everyone. There will be some instances where you can't use this, but that's fine, I think. At least there's a way to do it. And then the other thing is, you know, this this can also be great for people just doing ad hoc analysis. Not everyone has this need to export everything. I know sometimes we get a little bit, I think, sort of attached to the idea that everything we built has to be seen and shared by someone. I use Tableau so often and never share what I build with anyone. I use it to answer questions of my own. And for those people, a table is a really efficient way of answering it. If you're going to do a presentation, you just want to be able to quickly search the data. This is a great setup. You can really get great information and great context in here and sort and really dive around with data. And don't forget, you can add visualizations to this as well. So I think it's a really nice touch. But anyway, I'd love to know what you think. I've definitely not answered every single question. So the comments are the best place to ask those questions. We'll try and get some answers. And as ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.